Hello and welcome to this CDP Studio tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to make a simple GUI application. The first thing we will do is create a new system. When the system has been generated, we will add a new GUI application to it. We won't be needing the default application, so we will just delete it. We will also add a sign component to the application. We are going to make a GUI to interact with the sign component. With the GUI application added, we select it and enter the sign mode. In the design mode, we have the widget box. This is where you'll find the default CDP widgets and objects to build your UI from. Next, we have the form editor. In the form editor, you will arrange the different objects and layouts. Up here, we have the object inspector. In this, you'll see the structure of your UI, which objects are parent to other objects, and so on. You can use the object inspector to select components that are too small or too hard to select in the form editor. The first thing we are going to do is add a couple of CDP-based containers. These containers are commonly used to group related objects. The containers also support PixMap backgrounds and SVG themes. As you can see, they are very small at the moment, and they require us to manually adjust their size. This is generally not wanted when making a UI. To fix this, we can add layouts. You can do this by selecting the central widget in the object navigator, and then clicking the layout you want at the top of the screen. The vertical layout will let you arrange objects in a column, while the horizontal layout will let you arrange objects in a row. We are going to pick the horizontal layout for our central widget. We are now going to add a couple of CDP widgets to our containers. In the first container we will put a CDP base title and a CDP base meter. In container number 2 we will put a title, a toggle button and a label. In CDP Studio, the shortcut for previewing your UI is Shift plus Alt plus R. The warning that pops up can be ignored since we are in design mode. After ignoring that warning, the UI will pop up in a preview. As you can see, the UI still does not handle resizing well. Not to worry, we are going to fix that now by adding layouts. The first thing we are going to do is right-click the first container in the object navigator. Then go to Layout, then pick Vertically. The other container is now getting crushed by the first one. This is due to it not having a layout or a minimum size set. We are going to give it a vertical layout as well. But there is still a problem. The widgets in container 2 are getting warped. In order to solve this, we are going to use a vertical spacer. A vertical spacer would take as much room vertically as it can. This will cause the other elements to return to their normal ratios. Now we can resize the UI and it will look the same. Now that we have our objects arranged in a nice layout, we want to change some of their properties. First we will edit the CDP based meter, because it only needs to display values between minus 1 to 1. We will scroll through the properties until we find the CDP based meter section. Under this section we will adjust the min value and the max value to minus 1 and 1. We also want to remove some of the ticks to make the meter look a bit cleaner. We change ticks major to 5. Next we are going to adjust the text of our CDP based title. We select it, but this time around we are going to use the filter. We type in text because this is what we are going to edit. This brings up all the properties related to text. Then we untick the unit text, because we don't need it. We then type in a suitable title text. We will repeat the process for the other base title as well. Notice that as I edit properties, their names turn bold. This is because they've changed, and you can reset them to the default value by clicking the button to the right of the form. We can also see that the titles look a bit weird because of the base container's margins. We can fix that by removing the margins. However, this made the label and the button look weird. We can fix this by adding a widget and put the label and the button inside this widget. This way they still keep their margin. When that is done, we edit our label. The handy thing about labels is that you can edit their text directly by double-clicking them. Let's check how it looks by pressing Shift-Alt-R. Perfect. All properties that are related to CDP communications are prefixed with CDP. This is very useful when filtering. Now we need to connect our UI to the sign component. To do this we use the routing system. Let's connect the CDP base meter first. First select the CDP base meter, and then type CDP into the filter. We are looking for the CDP routing property. In this we will input the route to the sign component's output. 
For the button, we will make it suspend and activate the assigned component. To do this, we need to find the CDP routing property and set this to the assigned component. We also need to set the CDP text message off. This is the message that will be sent when the button is flicked off. We set this to cm underscore suspend. Sending cm underscore suspend will set the component in standby. We also want to be able to turn it back on, so therefore we will assign the message on to cm underscore activate, so that we are able to wake the component back up again. We will now run and test our application. As you can see, the meter is now showing the sign value, and pressing the button toggles the sign component on and off. This was all for this tutorial, I will see you in the next video.